10. Exercises Every Man Should Avoid Hello everyone. When it comes to working out and staying in shape, it's important to know which exercises to avoid to prevent injuries or negative effects on your progress. After all, no one wants to be sidelined due to an injury, right? That's why today I am going to tell you about the 10 exercises every man should avoid, either because they are too risky or simply because they do not provide the expected benefits. Do you want to know which exercises they are? Then stay until the end, because number 8 is the one most people do wrong. Number 1. Flat Barbell Bench Press It can put excessive pressure on the shoulders and wrists, especially if the technique is not correct. The Flat Barbell Bench Press is a popular exercise for developing the muscles of the chest, shoulders, and triceps, but it can place a significant amount of pressure on the shoulders, especially if the technique is not correct. To minimize the risk of shoulder injuries and achieve the best results, it is crucial to perform the flat barbell bench press with proper form, ensuring that the shoulders are stable and that the bar is aligned correctly throughout the movement. Additionally, it is important to start with light weights and progress gradually, allowing the body to adapt to the exercise. Every individual is unique, and some may have shoulder limitations that make the flat barbell bench press uncomfortable or risky. In these cases, it is recommended to consult a fitness professional or a physical therapist to evaluate the technique and determine if modifications or variations of the exercise are necessary. In summary, the flat barbell bench press does not need to be avoided, but it is essential to perform it correctly, paying attention to technique and respecting individual limitations. Number 2. Stiff-legged deadlift. It can increase the risk of back injuries, especially if the spine is not aligned correctly. The straight-legged deadlift, also known as the stiff or stiff-legged deadlift, can increase the risk of back injuries if the spine is not properly aligned during the exercise. The straight-legged deadlift is an exercise that primarily targets the strengthening of the posterior muscles of the legs, such as the hamstrings and glutes. However, when proper technique is not followed, excessive weight is used, or the spine is not properly aligned, the pressure can be directed to the lower back, increasing the risk of injuries, such as disc herniations or muscle strains. To minimize the risk of back injuries during the straight leg deadlift, it is important to keep the spine aligned in a neutral position, avoiding arching or excessively rounding the back. Additionally, it is essential to start with light weights and gradually progress, allowing the body to adapt to the exercise and strengthen the appropriate muscles. Each individual is unique, and some people may have limitations or a history of back injuries that make the straight-legged deadlift unsuitable. In such cases, it is recommended to consult a physical education professional or a physical therapist to assess the technique, provide proper guidance, and if necessary, suggest variations of the exercise that are safer and more appropriate to individual needs. The straight-legged deadlift can increase the risk of back injuries if the spine is not properly aligned. Therefore, it is essential to perform the exercise with proper technique and respect individual limitations. Always seek professional guidance to ensure safe and effective training. Number 3. Push-ups with hands too far apart. It puts extra pressure on the shoulders and wrists, increasing the risk of injuries. Doing push-ups with hands too far apart can put extra pressure on the shoulders and wrists, increasing the risk of injuries to these joints. Push-ups are an effective exercise for strengthening the chest, shoulders, and triceps muscles. However, when positioning the hands too far apart during push-ups, the load and stress on the shoulder and wrist joints can increase significantly. This wide position can lead to excessive external rotation of the shoulders, which can overload the muscles and ligaments involved, increasing the risk of injuries, such as strains or even dislocations. Additionally, placing the hands too far apart can also increase pressure on the wrists because they need to support part of the body's weight. This excessive pressure on the wrists can result in pain, inflammation, or even injuries, such as tendinitis. To minimize the risk of injuries to the shoulders and wrists during push-ups, it is recommended to position the hands at a width that is comfortable and allows for good stability in the joints. An appropriate position would be to align the hands approximately at shoulder width. It is also important to pay attention to the correct technique of push-ups, keeping the body aligned, elbows close to the body, and performing the movement in a controlled manner. If you feel discomfort or pain in the shoulders or wrists during push-ups, it is recommended to stop the exercise and seek guidance from a physical education professional or physiotherapist to evaluate the technique and provide appropriate advice. In conclusion, doing push-ups with hands too far apart can put extra pressure on the shoulders and wrists, increasing the risk of injuries to these joints. It is important to perform the exercise with an appropriate hand position and pay attention to the correct technique to ensure safe and effective training. 
Number 4. Leg Press with Knees Too Bent It can place excessive strain on the knees, especially if the weights are too heavy. Performing leg press with the knees too bent can place excessive strain on the knee joints, particularly if a very heavy load is added. The leg press is a popular exercise for strengthening the leg muscles, including the quadriceps, glutes, and hamstrings. However, when the knees are bent beyond a comfortable or safe angle, the pressure on the knee joints increases significantly. This excessive strain can overload the joint structures, such as the ligaments and cartilage, increasing the risk of injuries like strains, sprains, or even meniscus injuries. Furthermore, performing the leg press with very heavy weights exacerbates the pressure on the knee joints even more. This can result in additional stress on the knee structures, increasing the risk of long-term injuries. To minimize the risk of knee injuries during the leg press, it is recommended to keep the knees at a comfortable and safe angle, avoiding excessive bending. The angle generally considered safe is when the knees are bent at around 90 degrees or slightly more. Additionally, it is important to choose an appropriate weight load that allows you to control the movement and maintain good form. If you experience discomfort, pain, or excessive pressure in the knees during the leg press, it is recommended to reduce the load or adjust the knee position to a safer angle. If pain or discomfort persists, it is advisable to consult a fitness professional or a physiotherapist for a more detailed assessment and specific guidance. In general, performing the leg press exercise with the knees too bent can place excessive strain on the knee joints, especially if the weights are too heavy. It is essential to maintain a safe angle in the knees and choose an appropriate load to avoid injuries and ensure effective and safe training. Number 5. Barbell Curl The barbell curl is a popular exercise for developing the biceps brachii muscles, located at the front of the arm. Even though it is an effective exercise for strengthening the biceps, it is important to be cautious to avoid overloading the elbows and wrists, which can increase the risk of tendon injuries. During the barbell curl, the load is applied to the elbows and wrists, in addition to the biceps. If proper technique is not followed or if the load is excessive, it can lead to excessive strain on the tendons that connect the muscles to the bones, especially in the elbow and wrist. If you experience persistent pain, discomfort, or notice signs of injury in the elbows and wrists while performing the barbell curl, it is recommended to stop the exercise and consult a healthcare professional, such as a physical therapist or sports medicine doctor, for proper evaluation. One tip that may help you is to switch the straight bar for the W bar. The EZ bar has a curvature in the shape of a W that allows for a more neutral and comfortable grip, aligning the wrists and elbows in a more natural position. This variation can reduce tension and stress on the wrists and elbows, making it a safer option for some people. The neutral grip can help reduce the excessive activation of the brachioradialis muscles located in the forearm compared to the straight bar. It can be an alternative for people with a history of elbow and wrist injuries or for those who feel discomfort in these areas when performing the barbell curl with a straight bar. Number 6. Crunches Crunches, also known as crunches, can put unnecessary pressure on the neck and cervical spine, especially when performed in high repetition or with improper technique. During crunches, it is common for people to place their hands behind their head and pull the neck forward, which can lead to excessive flexion of the cervical spine and additional pressure on the intervertebral discs and neck structures. This continuous and excessive pressure can increase the risk of injuries, such as muscle strain, ligament sprain, or even cervical disc herniation. To avoid putting unnecessary pressure on the neck and cervical spine during crunches, it is recommended to follow the following guidelines. Proper alignment. Keep the neck in a neutral position, avoiding pulling the head forward or overloading the neck when lifting the torso. Hand positioning. Instead of placing the hands behind the head, cross the arms over the chest or place the hands beside the ears without pulling the head forward. Proper abdominal activation. Focus on contracting the abdominal muscles throughout the movement, avoiding the tendency to pull the neck forward to assist in lifting the torso. Controlled range of motion. Avoid excessive flexion of the cervical spine when coming up, keeping the movement controlled and limited to avoid overloading the neck area. Exercise variation. Consider including variations of abdominal exercises that put less pressure on the neck and cervical spine, such as planks or core stabilization exercises. It is important to remember that each person is unique and may have individual needs. Number 7. Squats with heels raised. It may increase the risk of injuries to the knees and lower back if the technique is not correct. Squats with heels raised, also known as jump squats or front supported squats, may increase the risk of injuries to the knees and lower back if the technique is not correct or if performed inadequately. 
In this variation of the squat, the heels are lifted off the ground, placing more pressure on the toes and the front of the feet during the movement. This can result in an uneven distribution of body weight and place excessive strain on the knees and lower back. Here are some important points to consider. Weight distribution. When lifting the heels, it is natural for the body weight to shift more towards the front of the feet. This can increase pressure on the toes and knees. If this excessive pressure is not adequately distributed, there may be a higher risk of knee injuries, such as ligament sprains or meniscal injuries. Stability and balance. Performing the squat with lifted heels can challenge stability and balance. If you do not have good balance or stability in the involved joints, there may be a loss of control during the movement, increasing the risk of falls or injuries. Flexibility and mobility. This squat variation requires good flexibility and mobility in the ankle, hip, and lower back joints. If you do not have the necessary range of motion in these areas, there may be excessive strain on the knees and lower back, increasing the risk of injuries in these regions. It is important to assess your own physical ability, experience level, and injury history before performing the squat with lifted heels. Number 8. Weighted Lateral Flexion Exercises for the Spine Weighted lateral flexion exercises for the spine can increase the risk of compression in the spinal discs and, consequently, increase the risk of herniated discs. Weighted lateral flexion exercises for the spine involve tilting the torso to the side while holding a weight, such as a dumbbell or barbell. This movement creates additional load on the intervertebral discs and the structures of the spine. Excessive compression in the discs of the spinal column can lead to a gradual deterioration of the discs and increase pressure on the outer part of the disc, which can result in herniated discs. Herniated discs occur when the gelatinous material of the disc protrudes outward, potentially compressing nearby nerves and causing pain, tingling, and weakness. It is important to mention that the compression of the discs of the spinal column can be influenced by inadequate technique, excessive overload, lack of core stability, and muscle weakness. To minimize the risk of disc compression and possible herniated discs, consider the following guidelines. Proper technique. Perform the exercise with proper technique, ensuring that the spine is aligned and that lateral flexion is primarily achieved through the action of the trunk muscles, avoiding placing excessive load on the discs. Gradual progression. Start with light weights and gradually increase the load, allowing your body to adapt to the progressive overload. Avoid exceeding your limits and respect your individual capacity. Core stability. Strengthen the core muscles, including the abdominals and back muscles, to provide a stable base during movement. A strong core can help protect the spinal column and reduce pressure on the discs. Exercise variation. Consider including different types of exercises that work the trunk muscles and promote spinal stability, such as side planks, trunk rotations, and core strengthening exercises. Professional guidance. If you are a beginner, have a history of spinal injuries, or have specific concerns about performing lateral flexion exercises with weight, it is recommended to seek guidance from a qualified professional, such as a personal trainer or a physiotherapist, who can assess your technique and provide appropriate instructions. Number 9. Pull down behind the head. The pull down behind the head, also known as the pull down behind the head, can place excessive pressure on the shoulders and cervical spine if the range of motion is not adequately controlled. In this exercise, the movement involves pulling a bar or rope towards the back of the head, primarily engaging the muscles of the back and shoulders. It is important to note that incorrect execution or an excessive range of motion can lead to issues with the shoulders and cervical spine. Here are some important considerations regarding the pull down behind the head. Stress on the shoulders. When performing the exercise with the bar or rope behind the head, the shoulders can be placed in a compromised position, especially if there is a lack of flexibility in the shoulders or if the technique is inadequate. This can lead to excessive tension in the muscles and ligaments of the shoulders, increasing the risk of injuries, such as strains or impingement of the soft tissues. Tension on the cervical spine. When pulling the bar or rope behind the head, the cervical spine is placed in a position of extreme flexion. This excessive flexion can increase pressure on the discs of the cervical spine and on the joint structures, which can be problematic for people with a history of cervical spine injuries or with a lack of mobility in this region. Controlled range of motion. It is essential to have control over the range of motion when performing the pull-down behind the head. Avoid forcing the bar or rope down beyond your ability to maintain good posture and proper alignment of the cervical spine and shoulders. An excessive range of motion can increase tension on these joints and raise the risk of injuries. Safe alternatives. If you have concerns regarding the behind-the-neck pull, consider safer alternatives, such as the front pull-down or variations 
that do not involve extreme flexion of the cervical spine. Remember that proper technique, control of the range of motion, and respecting your body's limits are essential to minimize the risk of injury when performing any exercise, including the behind-the-neck pull. Number 10. Jumping from a box with excessive height. Jumping from a box with excessive height can significantly increase the risk of injuries to the ankles and knees, especially if the landing technique is not correct. When jumping from a box with greater height, the impact generated upon landing is higher, and the ankles and knees are the most affected joints in this process. If the landing technique is not adequate, the load and pressure on the ankles and knees can be excessive, increasing the risk of sprains, ligament strains, meniscal injuries, or even fractures. Here are some important considerations about jumping from a box with excessive height. Proper landing technique. The correct landing technique is extremely important to minimize the risk of injury. When landing, it is important to keep the knees aligned with the toes, slightly flex the knees, and absorb the impact with the leg muscles instead of relying solely on the joints. Avoid landing with straight legs or with the knees in volgus. Inward, gradual progression. It is important to progress gradually in relation to the height of the box. Start with lower heights, and as you gain strength, stability, and confidence in your landing technique, increase the height of the box progressively. Do not rush to jump to extreme heights without having a solid foundation. Adequate strengthening. Strengthening the leg muscles, including the quadriceps, hamstrings, and calf muscles, can help provide stability and support during jumping. Additionally, strengthening the stabilizing muscles of the ankles is also important to protect this joint. Professional guidance. If you do not have prior experience with box jumps or are unsure about the correct technique, it is highly recommended to seek guidance from a qualified professional, such as a personal trainer or a fitness specialist. Remember that each person has individual limitations, and the height of the box and the intensity of the jumps should be adapted to your abilities, strength, and injury history. Bonus! Smith Machine Squat The Smith Machine Squat is not highly recommended by fitness experts for several reasons. 1. Restricted Movement the Smith machine guides the bar along a fixed path, which can limit the natural movement of the body during the squat. This can prevent the muscles from being properly activated and developed. 2. Risk of injury. Due to the fixed path of the bar, there is a higher risk of placing undue pressure on the back and knees. This can lead to injuries, especially if proper form and technique are not followed. 3. Uneven muscle development. The use of the Smith machine can result in uneven muscle development as it does not allow the body to naturally adjust and balance the weight, as it does with free squats. Now that you know the 10 exercises every man should avoid, let us know in the comments which of these you are still doing incorrectly.